for you all. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to design an optimal training program to maximize glute growth. And also this can apply to any muscle group that you want to grow, not just specifically your glutes. So I'm hoping this will be useful for any of you guys who have been struggling with seeing results in your glutes or are new to building your glutes. So it isn't as easy as it seems, especially if you're new to the gym, since there are a lot of different factors that need to be taken into account when you're designing a training program. And also, if you don't follow me already, definitely follow me on Instagram. It's just Addict Lulu. And whenever I'm not on my YouTube channel, you can find me on my Instagram posting stories, photos, or videos. So if you want to keep in touch with me when I'm not on my YouTube channel, then definitely follow me on over at my Instagram. And also, if you guys are new to my channel, definitely click that subscribe button for more videos. And if you already are subscribed, then click that notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload new videos. So anyways, let's just get started with this video. So the first topic we're going to cover is training frequency. So frequency refers to the number of resistance training sessions performed in a given period of time, as well as the number of times a specific muscle group is trained over a given period of time. So how many times a week should you train your glutes? This can be a confusing and also a controversial topic. And I feel like a lot of people have the idea that the more you train your glutes, the more they will grow, which is a misconception mm -hmm. in my point of view. Since muscle building actually occurs when you're resting and not when you're training, but training your glutes five to six times a week could work for some people since everyone's anatomy is different. But based on research, working a specific muscle group two times a week was more optimal for muscle hypertrophy compared to once per week. And this was shown in 2016 systematic review and meta-analysis by Schoenfeld et al. where they compared 10 studies that investigated training muscle groups between one to three days per week on a volume equated basis. And from their study, they demonstrated that frequencies of training twice per week promoted superior hypertrophic outcomes to once per week. So the second topic we're going to be covering is compound versus isolation movements. So these are the two groups that an exercise can fall into. A compound exercise or scientifically a multi-joint exercise, meaning the use of two or more joints, is an exercise that involves the use of more than one major muscle group at a time. An isolation exercise or in scientific terms a single joint exercise, primarily operating at one joint, is basically an exercise where only one major muscle group is trained. So each type of movement alone will fail to deliver an optimal physique. Compound movements like the squat and the hip thrust are notoriously known for delivering incredible glute gains. However, isolation movements sometimes activate a particular muscle or a subdivision of a muscle a lot better than compound movements. For example, squats do an awesome job at activating the lower portion of your glutes, but not so much the upper portion. To hit the upper portion of the gluteus maximus, you want to perform isolation exercises like cable kickbacks, sideline hip abduction, lateral band walks, and etc. Designing a glute program with both compound and isolation exercises will equate to greater hypertrophic stimulus via all three primary mechanisms of muscle growth which are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. So the third topic is progressive overload. So progressive overload means you're doing more and more over time. So this doesn't solely mean adding more weight to a bar, but instead it also means doing more reps. So the concept of progressive overload involves skeletal muscles growing bigger and bigger in response to the training stimulus. But for further gains, you need to continue making greater demands on it. If you don't progressively overload your muscles by forcing them to do more than they're accustomed to, they have no reason to make further adaptions. Your body will not change unless it's forced to and once you fall into a comfort zone and the workouts are no longer challenging you'll begin to plateau so the best way to do this would be to write down your workouts and make a workout schedule outlining the specific compound and exercises along with the respective reps sets and rest times and also you don't want to forget the weight that you're using if progressive overload is new to you basically when you begin an exercise the key is to start light and gradually work your way up 
So the last important factor to designing a optimal glute training program is to continuously change up your routine. So my favorite way to do this is not to do the same exercises over and over again, but to incorporate new exercises that offer unique ways to target your glutes that other exercises might not be able to do. Whenever I try new glute exercises, change up my stance, add in a long loop resistance band or a fabric band, my glutes are always on fire the next day. Even if you can't think of any new exercises to do, you can switch from light to heavy days, where one day of the week you use lighter weights and then the other day of the week you do heavier weights. You can also change up your exercise by tweaking it slightly. For example, you can add in a long loop resistance band during your squat exercise to provide some more difficulty and also glute activation. And I like using this band because I find it adds so much more resistance to the point where I can feel the glute activation so much more in my glutes compared to when I don't use this band. And as some of you guys know, I do have a lot of difficulty feeling glute activation when I perform my squats, specifically in my lower glutes. And that's because I'm more quad dominant as opposed to glute dominant. But whenever I add in my long loop resistance band, I feel the glute activation immediately. So this goes hand in hand with progressive overload, where if you want your glute muscles to grow bigger and stronger, you need to continuously stimulate your glutes by making your workouts more and more challenging. So that was it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, definitely give this a thumbs up. And if you're new, definitely click that subscribe button. And I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.